EPA WA Meteorologist Bobby Marchant here with your outlook for April 17th, 2019 for your Wednesday. We're still going to have this uh, boundary that's uh, sitting over the region came in last evening. Some areas saw a few showers with that. Still going to be sitting situated over the region today. Uh, I don't want to call this a warm front because I was actually corrected with this. And uh, it's very smart guy, guys that are in, in, in college right now uh, studying meteorology informed me that this is a a quasi stationary boundary that is exactly correct uh, but the difference is I you know when I'm talking to the public here uh, if I start saying quasi stationary this that and the other thing people are going to look at me like I'm crazy and not uh, will not be able to follow along so everybody understands warm front basically the same idea it's just a stationary boundary that's situated over our region just like this so uh, that is going to be in place through Thursday and along that uh, boundary there's going to be these little weak impulses that are moving along. We saw one of those last night that brought to our northern half of our region. Uh, did see a few very light showers moving in. I think it's going to happen again tonight into Thursday morning as well. And is barely even noticeable here. There's very little. See this right here? There's not really too much going on. Uh, again, it's favoring those pretty much those same areas. Just some very light stuff moving in. And uh, barely showing up here on the uh, on the image here for the global model. So it's not going to amount to much. Just a few sprinkles and light showers. And that might come in uh, during the overnight. Let's go to the NAM High Res Future Simulated Radar. I'm going to shut this off at 8 p.m. You see a little couple little dots here. That's that's really it. Uh, might be some drizzle associated with this. Because when whenever you have a warm front or a quasi-stationary boundary over the region, you will have the opportunity for some drizzle. So that is possible as well. Uh, but you see there's really not too much going on. This is going into the overnight period right here. And uh, this goes into late overnight after midnight. I can see some areas getting into some spotty, just a spotty shower or some drizzle here, especially later in the overnight. And that's going to go right into Thursday morning. This is looking at early Thursday morning, kind of over New Jersey here now at this point. And then that impulse moves off to the north and east and out of our area later on to, on uh, Thursday. So if you're going to have a shower, it's going to be very insignificant. And that's going to be uh, generally... I don't know, like maybe late evening this evening in the overnight going into early Thursday morning and that's it. Okay, so not a big deal. All right. That boundary is going to lift off to the north and that quasi stationary boundary will in fact become a warm front as it moves off to the north and warm air starts to infect from the south and west. Okay, uh, that's going to happen after this system leaves and this area of low pressure this is one of the low pressures that drive that's going to drive this uh, warm front boundary northward and get us into the milder temperatures once we get to Thursday and Friday. Okay, so it's going to be very warm uh, for those next couple of days. Now, the head of this next system is going to bring scattered thunderstorms later in the day here on Friday, and these are going to be pretty legit, I think. I think we have the opportunity for some severe weather again on Friday. Uh, it's going to come in later in the day, later afternoon, evening, and uh, at least part of the overnight here with some heavy rain that's going to follow those strong to perhaps severe storms. The setup is such that we have a cutoff upper level low that's going to be sitting over the Tennessee Valley right about here. And this trough here is neutral turning negative. Okay, so that means so here's your cutoff low like this. Uh, at this point in, uh, on a Friday afternoon, it's pretty much neutral. When you're having some very a very strong wind flow out ahead of this south-southwesterly flow aloft, and this is looking at 500 millibars at about 18,000 feet. And what we're seeing here, and you can see by the isobars here, is we're having a difluent, difluent flow aloft. So they're kind of it means it's fanning out, going in different directions like this. And when you have that kind of difluent uh, flow aloft and divergence, you can get severe weather. And in the kind of the severe weather we're talking about here is speed, or it is speed shear rather than directional shear. So when you have speed shear, and there's a lot of it, a lot of it forecast to be here again, just like we had a couple days ago. The difference is that was more directional shear. So instead of winds veering at height and going in different directions, everything's kind of going, kind of going generally in the same direction. And that leads to a straight line wind threat. So for this event that's coming in on Friday, if we do have severe weather, and I out, if you follow me on Twitter, I did outline these areas right in here. These are the areas I circled for the potential for severe weather right in here. Okay. These are the areas of the highest potential uh, for severe weather across our region on Friday. This is later Friday, Friday evening. And this is the area where you can see those strong straight line winds. Uh, not, not, not to say the tornadoes are impossible, but the, it's a lower likelihood than what we saw uh, with this last round that we had a few days ago. Okay, so this one's more straight line winds. And it's going to be driven by 
several different things. It is not exactly the same setup as we had uh, that we just had a couple days ago. It's a little bit different it's synoptically, so it's not going to be exactly the same. But the damage can still be done with straight line wind damage. Uh, straight line wind damage is still a real thing, also uh, that can be uh, pretty nasty. So it doesn't. You don't need a tornado to destroy property or take down trees straight line winds can do that just the same so we're going to watch this very closely again that's later afternoon on friday into friday evening and then after that there's a little low pressure that's going to try to move along that frontal boundary it may enhance the rainfall a little bit and we get some heavy rain that might follow those severe storms overnight and that's going to go right into saturday morning with some leftover showers. This is looking at Saturday, more, actually early afternoon. The front's finally clearing off these, but you still have some scattered showers around. So I think during the morning on Saturday, you have some scattered showers. And then after that point, you might see some improvement in the afternoon, but still remaining mostly cloudy. Leftover showers still here and there in some places. So Saturday is the, of the two weekend days, Saturday is the poor of the two days. And then we get to Sunday. Upper level low that was uh, shown here in this previous image is going to rotate through. You can see that here, rotating right through the region. Okay, and that's going to move away on uh, during the course of Sunday. So Sunday might start off a little damp and maybe a spotty shower here in the morning. Uh, but I think as we move through the course of the day, things are going to improve as that uh, upper level low moves away, the cutoff low moves away, and uh, says, uh, the conditions will improve here on Sunday later in the day. So starting off a little bit maybe damp in the morning and then getting better later in the day. But the better the two days is going to be Sunday, uh, not Saturday. Saturday is going to be a little bit more showery and uh so if you have any outdoor plans and you want to pick between one or the other and pick a day that's going to be better, pick Sunday. Sunday looks a little bit better. Of course, that's Easter Sunday, so that's a good thing for those of you that are uh, have have activities going on for that. So getting into a Monday, a little uh, indeterminable about what's going to happen with this next week. The models are a little, a little bit at odds ex exactly how this is going to evolve. Monday could end up being another partly to mostly cloudy day, maybe a late shower here coming in late in the day or evening. Another one of these. Quasi-stationary boundaries are going to be situated near the area, so we'll have to watch this very closely. At the very least, you could you should have more clouds and sun going into early next week, but it is going to be milder. It looks like to start early next week with temperatures back in the 70s, so that is one good thing. We'll just have to work out the details of this boundary, where it sets up, if it's over our region or near it, or maybe not at all. All three are possibilities, and which will determine the outcome of our weather early next week. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm EPAWA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for April 17th, 2019. Have a great Wednesday.